Namaste, Namaskar. Welcome to National Level One Archery Coaches Workshop. Training, examination, and certification organized by the Archery Association of India (AAI) Coaches Committee and supported by OGQ Olympic Gold Quest. The most exclusive, expansive, detailed, hands-on training assessment and certification program in India. In this section, in this lecture, you'll learn about cushion plunger setting. Clearance, troubleshooting arrow groups, adjusting the bow and arrow system. Well, archery, future archery coaches, let's start with cushion plunger setting. When correcting fish tailing using the bash shaft planing test, use the cushion plunger for fine adjustments only and not for large horizontal adjustments. It is important to have first have good spine compatibility for the bow before using the cushion plunger to correct gross errors in spine. In the fine tuning process, the cushion plunger's ability for improving grouping will become evident. Also, it is important to note that when adjusting the cushion plunger tension, it will almost always affect knocking point height as well as dynamic spine. Don't be surprised if the bash shaft impacts. The bash shaft impacts change in height as well as horizontal impact. If during the tuning process you are unable to get the unfletched shafts to impact near the fletched shafts in the horizontal plane, it will be most likely necessary to change arrow size, that is arrow spine. Your arrows might be too weak. The unfletched shaft impacts to the right of the fletched shaft right-handed archers are too stiff, the unfleshed shaft impacts to the left or the fleshed shaft for right-handed archers. If after completing this test, the bare shaft impact is more than three inches, that is eight centimeters to the right weak or left stiff of the fleshed shaft at 20 yards, that is about 18 meters, you will most likely need to change shaft size, that is spine. However, before going to this most more costly investment, make sure you're not having a false tuning indicator caused by a clearance problem. Usually incompatible arrow spine is the biggest cause of a clearance problem, but not always. Now let's go to clearance. To check for clearance, use dry powder, Foot spray, dry, de dry deodorant spray, or similar product applied to the last quarter of the arrow shaft. Take the arrow shaft and apply the spray uh, to the fletching arrow rest assembly and uh, the sight window near the arrow rest. Do not disturb the powder sprayed on the arrow and bow while preparing to shoot. The arrow should be shot into a firm target so that it will not penetrate to the powder area then check the powder on the arrow to see if there are any marks indicating an impact between the arrow and bow. Now let's uh, talk about correcting clearance problems. If you are not achieving good arrow clearance and the arrow fletching and bow make contact, optimum grouping cannot be achieved. By examining the areas where the dry powder spray is scraped off. The nature of any interference can be determined. And the position of the fletching as the arrow leaves the bow can be identified. If there is a clearance problem, this can usually be seen in the arrow's flight to the target. A term used to explain the visual flight disturbance is called minnowing. Like fish tailing or purpoising, minnowing disturbs, describes a specific arrow flight disturbance. Minnowing will appear to look much like fish tailing, except that the tail of the arrow appears to move from side to side more quickly, and the amount of side swing is usually much less than in fish tailing. Minnowing indicates inadequate clearance and is caused by the rear portion of the arrow usually fletching contacting the arrow rest or cushion plunge. My voice is getting bad. I had a three hour lecture. The following procedures can help you correct clearance problems that cause 
Minoway. If the arrow fletching, the arrow fletching is hitting the arrow rest, try rotating your arrow knock one by 32 of a turn. Continue rotating the knock in one by 32 turn increments until clearance is achieved. Make sure your arrow rest arm, support arm, does not protrude past the outside of the arrow shaft when the arrow is resting on the support arm is lying and again lying against the cushion plunger or side loading device. Choose a lower profile fletching. Follow the procedures for tuning adjustments for knock indexing and arrow rest setup. Make sure the bow hand is well relaxed to eliminate bow hand talk. Move the cushion plunger slightly out from the bow to help increasing clearance if the other tuning modifications have no effect. Now let's check about troubleshooting arrow groups. You may have heard someone say, if your arrow group groups well at 20 yards, they will group at any distance. Or if your arrows group at long distances, they will also group at short distances. In some cases, neither statement is true. There may be a min minute disturbance in the equipment that affects the equipment's potential for superior accuracy, causing poor arrow grouping. What follows here is information that will help you perform the fine tuning adjustments necessary to eliminate most or all of the minute tuning problems. Many archers have experienced one or all of the following arrow grouping, arrow flight combinations. Poor arrow flight and good grouping. This is commonly the result of a stiff arrow. The arrow yaws slightly as it leaves the bow and usually recovers quickly and often produces very acceptable grouping. Now, good arrow flight and poor grouping. Although this seems contradictory, the phenomenon is somewhat common and relates to the tuning method used or a lack of fine tuning. Having perfect arrow flight or having the bash shaft impact exactly with the fresh shafts using the bash shaft planing test does not always mean your arrows will group well. It only means the arrows fly well. The section on fine tuning will assist you in obtaining optimal grouping from your equipment as well as good arrow flight. It is best to work forward, good arrow flight and good grouping as this will produce the most consistent results in any weather, especially in windy conditions. Arrow grouping patterns often reveal probable arrow flight problems. Two of the most important grouping indicators for determining arrow flight problems are described. I will describe them now. First is called excessive drag. What do you call it? Excessive drag. If the arrow has too much drag, which means it goes slow against the wind, that is the fletchings are too large or the fletch are offset too much, it can cause excessive drag. And grouping will often suffer at long distance. For example, if shooting feet are distances earlier, like 90, 70, 50 and 30 meters or for men and 70, 60, 50 and 30 meters for women, you may experience good grouping on all distances except for the long distance. If this is the case, the arrow most likely has too much of a drag. Excessive drag will cause the arrow to become unstable due to the rapid decay of its forward velocity. When forward velocity drops too quickly, instability occurs. This unstable flight causes poor grouping at long distances and extreme vulnerability to wind drift. On lightweight arrows, it is very important to reduce drag to a minimum to maintain maximum downrange velocity. This can be done by reducing the size, the height or length of the fletching or by reducing the angle of the fletching or both. Insufficient clearance. Now what happens when there's insufficient clearance? A clearance problem will usually have the opposite effect of excessive drag. Most often arrow grouping 
is acceptable at longer distances. However, the shorter distance groups are not reduced in size proportionately to those at the longer distances. This situation commonly results in short distance scores and are sufficiently less than what the longer distance scores would indicate. If this is a familiar scenario, look for a clearance problem or micro disturbance within the bow and arrow system. Next, adjusting the bow and arrow system. If you are having problems tuning your bow, you will need to make some modifications for your equipment to achieve better tune. Let me tell you some suggestions. Number one, bow weight adjustment. Virtually all target quality recurve bows have an adjustable draw weight system. Bow weight adjustment should be the first tuning consideration if your arrow reaction is significantly stiff or weak. It is important not to increase bow weight more than one or two pounds as it could have detrimental effects on shooting technique. You can't really shoot. Here is a good guideline to follow to know if you can physically handle an increase in bow weight. Simply draw and hold your bow at full draw for 60 seconds. If you can hold the weight for an entire minute, you can handle the one or two pound increase. If the arrow reaction is too stiff when you, when applying the bear shaft tuning test, increase the draw weight. If your arrow reaction is too weak, decrease the draw weight. Next, bow string. The string on the bow. Bow string weight can have a significant effect on an arrow spine. Increasing or decreasing the number of strands in the bow string can influence the arrow's dynamic spine enough to require a shaft size change of up to one full size weaker or stiffer. If your arrow Reaction is too stiff. Decrease the number of strands in your bowstring. If your arrow reaction is too weak, increase the number of strands. Now, serving weight, that is center serving, can also produce the same effect. For example, monofilament center serving will cause the arrow to react stiffer than the lighter weight nylon center serving. Simply changing from a metal knocking point <clears throat> to a tie-on knocking point can have a noticeable effect on arrow spine as well due to the weight difference between the two styles of knocking points. Now next, point and insert weight. Point and insert weight. The arrow's dynamic spine can be tuned by using various points and or insert outset weight combinations. If your arrow is too weak, go to a lighter insert or point. If your arrow is still stiff or very stiff, try a heavier insert or point. Continue to change insert and or point weights within an acceptable balance point range. That is 10 to 18% of FOC. Well, catch you soon with the next part of recurve boat tuning. Well, guys, since the lecture is loaded with information, it may not get into our heads easily. If it does, we all must be geniuses. Please listen to my lecture over and over again in your headphones. This will truly help you understand what I say. Keep on listening. Keep repeating till you're thorough with it. Till you have completely grasped the subject. Find the answers to the five questions and please send them to me on direct message or on WhatsApp number 9841618386. The common mission of all of us is the same, to make India our motherland, Hindustan the ultimate in archery. Let's join hands towards this goal and chant, Om, 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 Olympic medal, Olympic medal, nothing but the Olympic medal in archery. Jai Hind, one day Madaram. Bye-bye, God bless. Sarva Siddhi Prapti Rastu, Sarva Vidya Prapti Rastu, Ayushman Bhava, Yashashvi Bhava, catch up.